All right. I am on here. All right, let's see. Hide the messages for now. What's up, everybody? Good morning to those in Los Angeles. What's up, everybody? Good morning to those in Los Angeles. What's up, everybody? Good morning. Turn the audio off. That's weird. Uh, and good afternoon to those on the East Coast. I thought we would start today off with a little pre-show of some dog tricks, just to set the mood. That's Roscoe. Hey, Roscoe. You wave to the camera. Good boy. That's so good. Okay, 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 okay. You sit. You lay down. That's good. All right, you ready? You sit. Roll over. Roll over. No, no, no. You got it. You can do it. Roll over. Almost. Almost. Come on, you got it. He's an old dog. He's got bad hips. You can do it. Roll over, pup. That's a different trick. <laughs> Roscoe, roll over. Roll over all the way. Come on. Roll over. Roll over. <laughs> okay, okay. That's good enough. I, can't, I don't know. He's got bad hips. I can't make him do it. All right. This is my favorite one. Sit. Sit. Stay. Uh-uh. Stay. Don't even think about it. You're on camera right now, dude. Uh-uh. I always feel bad about doing this like it's animal. Oh, hey. Come on, pup. Sit. Hey. No, no, no. Look at me. Sit. Sometimes I'll go. I'm going to go over to the kitchen. All eyes on me, though, bud, right? Yeah. Don't you dare. Okay. Good boy. All right. Here. Here you go. All right. So this morning, I'm going to teach you guys how to do the crispy egg that I learned from Frank Prezzano. I'm not really sure how to pronounce his last name. It's very Italian. But um, it's going to be cool. And uh, here is what you need if you want to cook along with me. One to two eggs. We got some nice red pepper flakes. Some salt. I'm using the uh, Celtic Gray Sea Salt. Uh, it's really a step up from the normal like kosher salt you buy at Trader Joe's and whatnot. Some freshly cracked black pepper and some Sicilian dried oregano. Now, I will say this oregano, you can't smell it, but you can here try to smell that. You can't. It's a phone. But uh, once I got back from Italy, we were actually... This is from uh, our honeymoon in Italy that my wife and I went on last year. Um, and I bought the oregano there. And then comparing that oregano to the, even the fancy oregano you buy at the grocery store in like the nice glass bottle, just smelling the two back to back, it's unbelievable how much better the uh, real oregano from Italy is. And I can never, I'll never buy that oregano again. It changes everything. And then for eggs, I like to use the Vital Farms pasture raised eggs. Uh, I think it's really important to try to, you know, buy certified humane animal byproducts when you can. Uh, and these eggs are awesome. And if you're not doing it for the happiness of the eggs, please at least do it for the happiness of your mouth because these eggs taste so much better than the cheap eggs you can get at the store. And really, you're talking about an extra $2 for eggs. So even two eggs on this still costs like a dollar and 30 cents for breakfast. It's really not that big a deal. Um, all right. So if you guys are ready with all your equipment, oh yeah, the other thing, you gotta use a stainless steel pan. You can try this on a nonstick pan, but nonstick pans are not designed to get scorching hot. You will kind of fuck up your pan. Um, it will leave it a little it'll just kind of burn off the nonstick formula on it. And so it's really not, not suggested that you use a nonstick pan, but you know, do as you will. This pan is actually new. I got it as a birthday present. It is, you can see that little dot symbol. That's the logo. It's from a company called Misen or Misen. Uh, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, but usually like an all clad stainless peel, uh, stainless steel pan, like one of these, are really crazy expensive. They're like me like 150 bucks for a frying pan like this, which is insane. This pan is only $65. So far, it looks great. It's been working great. Uh, I can't really even tell the difference between this and one of the really nice all-clad pans. So yeah, 
um, check out Meeson, Meeson. All right, so if we're ready to cook, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna turn on our heat. We're gonna turn it up to like a, like a medium and get that flame going. Now we're just gonna leave the pan dry. And we're gonna wait for that pan to get so hot that we start seeing little wisps of smoke coming out. And that is when we're gonna add the olive oil. A lot of people say, you know, olive oil has a low smoke point, so it's gonna burn if you uh, put it on a scorching hot pan. So the trick is here is to not put the oil on the pan until the pan is already really hot. If I put the oil on the pan now and let the pan get to the really hot temperature, then the oil would burn because it would have more time on the heat. But this is gonna be such a quick cook cooking process that even on a super hot pan, the oil will not burn. And while you're waiting for the pan to get to heat, this is a really good time to gather all of your, your equipment, get it right. I got it as close to the pan. I even put a cutting board on the burner so it's like right there. Because what we're gonna do is once we add this egg, it's gonna be like bam, 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 and bam. And then we're just gonna let it cook and not touch it. Um, also here, let me crack this egg real quick. Sorry, let me put this up here, get this ready for the... Let me put this up here, get this ready for the... Sorry, let me put this up here, get this ready for Bear with me for one second. There we go, that's a good angle. So I'll crack this egg. I'm only going to do one egg right now because what I'm thinking is I'm gonna cook this egg and feed it to my wife, and then I'm gonna show you how you can make another version where you kind of make it a little bit more like a crispy taco. Uh, it's really important to put your eggs in a little dish like this for two reasons. One is that once I pour this in, I gotta start seasoning, and especially if you're doing two eggs, you don't have time to crack an egg, put it in, get another egg, crack it, put it in. By that time, the cook is gonna be uneven. So you wanna get your eggs ready too. The other reason is I think, and I'm, I'm not really a food, I have no formal training, I'm not a scientist or anything, but by cracking the egg into a dish beforehand, I feel like it lets the egg whites kind of loosen up a little bit and you get a much better circular figure uh, on the cook. And when you crack it in the egg, sometimes the egg white's still so attached to the yolk that it bunches up in the middle and doesn't spread out nicely. So we're still just, we're just waiting on this pan give it some time. You want to bring up the heat kind of slowly. You don't want to just turn, crank it on super high and let it get hot too fast. In the meantime, you take a sip of your tea. Also, you can see I'm repping our good friends, a deer, a horse. They're a really awesome band uh, of old friends of Sloth Rest. We actually all went to the same college together and took a lot of the same, we had the same music teachers and we're in a lot of the same classes. I'm pretty sure me and Leah were in a I can't remember if it was a blues ensemble or a jazz ensemble with Angela, their bass player, but you know, it's a crazy time out there, especially for your favorite bands and musicians who are not only out of work from tours being canceled, but also a lot of them have part-time jobs and restaurants and those are obviously canceled. So great time to support your favorite bands. So check out this sweet shirt from a deer horse and check them out on Spotify and Instagram and YouTube and all that kind of stuff. And if you dig it, buy a shirt, it's cool. Bring this up the heat a little bit. And we're just doing the waiting game. The first time I used this pan to try to make a crispy egg, it was brand new and I tried to bring it up to temperature. And you know, what I'm waiting to see is a little bit of smoke and that usually happens from the little oil residue around the edge of the pan. Um, oh, I'm gonna tell the story later, because look, it is starting to smoke, can you see it? Can't really see it on this angle, but there's a little wisp of smoke. The pan's gonna be nice and hot. All right, so we're ready to cook. I like to put the oregano on as my first seasoning because I figure the that's the flavor I like the most. And the more time that has in the egg to cook, the more flavor the egg will have. So kind of think about what flavor you wanna pop the most and season that first. And I usually try to end with the salt. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the olive oil in. It should kind of like bubble a little bit right away. It should be really hot. And right after you put the olive oil in, you're gonna to toss in the egg. So I even like to 
you know, olive oil, egg, get it ready to rock. All right, here we go. Actually, I'm gonna give it 10 more seconds to let the pin get a little hotter. All right, we got the olive oil. My stove is at a little bit of an angle. See that sizzle, you wanna hear that pop, that bubble? Don't worry, a little olive oil burn is not gonna kill anyone. And then, bam, put the egg in. That's perfect. You want to see the bubbling up, you want to hear that sound, and I'm immediately going to hit it with some oregano. Some uh, red pepper flakes. You can skip this part if you don't like a little spice. These are also from Italy and insanely spicy compared to the American version. Some of the black pepper. And I like to season from like six inches above the egg because if you if you season too close to the egg, it's all gonna get splashed in one spot. It's not gonna spread out as much. And then the salt. Well, you might wanna, you know, move the oil around a little bit. Now we're not gonna touch the egg. Right now that egg is glued to the pan. If I tried to scrape it up, it would get stuck and you'd have all that egg residue on there. Uh, and that's no good. Um, once the egg is fully cooked on the bottom surface, it becomes crispy, it's going to naturally separate from the pan, and you're going to have no problem. If you are in a hurry, and want this egg, or if you like the super runny yolk, but uh, you like to have the egg whites cooked, what you can do, a little, little trick, is tilt the pan a little bit, take a spoon, and just kind of drizzle some oil on some of the uncooked egg white spots. The other thing you want to do is you want to manage your heat. Every every stove is different. Some stoves are a little too hot. Mine's smoking a little bit too much, so I'm just gonna. I, instead of turning the heat down, I like to just take the pan off the heat for like five seconds because the pan's still super hot. It's still cooking the egg. Put it back down. You know, if you see chefs, you can like pop it over there. You know, whatever you want to do. And that's really it. Now we're just now it's a waiting game, and you're just waiting until here. Let me take this off. You are just waiting until all the egg yolks are cooked. So if you can see, usually the egg whites closest to the yolk are that's a little raw still, right? So if I want it, I can like spoon a little oil right onto there. That's gonna help get it cook, or you can just let it go. You're looking for these nice, crispy, crunchy edges. That's what I'm talking about. Um, right under the yolk, it still needs a little more time because that's going to not crisp up as much because of all the egg on top of it. And as it's getting close, once it's almost there, once the egg whites are like 90% cooked, just turn the heat off. Look, heat's off, egg is still cooking. It's still cooking up very nicely. Now, I recommend a fish spatula, which I've been making the crispy egg for a year without a spit. I just got this. Um, this is good for eggs and pancakes and stuff because it's so skinny and flexible that it's really easy to, it really gets under nicely. Unlike my old, where is it, rubber spatula is much thicker so it's a little harder to, to get. But love the fish spatula. Let me pull this plate over. Okay. And you know, to see if it's done, you just kind of slowly. So it's, I feel a little resistance there. So I'm gonna let that keep cooking for a, a little bit. And this is gonna be nice. This is how you do it if you want. That yolk is gonna be very runny, uh, super crispy. This crispy stuff tastes, it just tastes so good. It's a very satisfying egg cook. All right, let's see. Look at that, see? No egg left, it's fully, it took no effort at all. Let me just make sure all that yolk is cooked, or the egg whites are cooked, sorry. Looking good. And then when you bring it over to the plate, it's still cooking. It is still cooking, you know? So don't worry about that. Now, 
Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna save this sauce for the uh, the next one. I'm gonna do. All right, let's check this out. Chelsea, sure you don't. I was gonna make this egg for her, but she's she's busy at work. Always working that one. Do you want any crispy egg? Or are you good? What? Do you want the crispy egg? or Are you okay? Um, no, I'm not. Okay. All right. Let me grab a little, little fork. Now, what I like to do. All right, come have a bite of it. Now, what I like to do with the crispy egg is kind of like if you, I like to break the yolk out and kind of just spread it around. That way it doesn't all pool onto the plate and you're not actually, you know, getting to eat it all. I like to break that, yeah, there we go. Now check this out. You can pick this egg up, well, that part. And that's what we're looking for in the bottom. A nice, perfect, crispy egg. What do you think? Nailed it. Nailed it, she says. All right, you want to take the first bite? Can I feed it to you? Sure. <laughs> it's going to get messy. It's going to be hot. Mm. <laughs> I feel like that. <laughs> really hot. <laughs> and yeah, you can. You don't even need a fork and knife. You just... Oh, that's really good. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, so... Here's the thing. You want to make another crispy egg on the same pan? You got to wipe it out. Sorry, let me just put this back up here for a second. Now, you got to wipe it out because now, if I brought the pan back up to heat, then the olive oil on this would, in fact, burn. And you don't want burned olive oil. Actually, I don't want to waste too many paper towels. So, one good thing about coronavirus is that it. I got home from New York and we didn't have any paper towels. And obviously, there were no paper towels to be had. So, I got creative and I ended up ordering 60 of these little dish rags. Which is something I've been meaning to do anyways to cut down on my paper towel use and it's awesome. So I just use these for everything and like no more drying your hands with paper towels after you wash them. That's such a waste of paper. And there's no need. Alright, so I wiped that down. I'm gonna turn the pan back on. I'm gonna bring it back up to heat. Once again, you wanna look for that little bit of smoke. Uh, and where did my egg thing go? Now this time I'm gonna show you how to make it a little bit more like if you wanted to use it as a taco shell. I don't, unfortunately I don't have any avocado or anything to put on it. Uh, really, but I might change up the seasonings a little bit. So we're letting this pan get back up to heat. Should not take that long since we just did a whole cook. In the meantime, I'll give you a little tour of the kitchen. We have our beautiful little area. This is an old kitchen. It's like an old sink. This house was built in like the 40s. I planted a little herb garden to try to avoid having to go to the grocery store when I can. It's our front yard. We've got nice windows, nice sunlight. It's awesome. I love being back in LA. We just switched out our old fridge back into the into the new house or to this house. Uh, let's see, we got this IKEA table. That's Roscoe's dining area. This pantry suite. We got this pantry at a at an estate sale a couple of years ago, right when we moved to LA. And um, it's it's really old. I've never seen anything like that. And it's cool. It has this like these weird compartments where we keep our teas. I keep my garlic in here and my trusty little garlic peeler right there. And since it's old and I don't really care about it that much, I just threw in a bunch of nails all over the place so I can hang my pots and pans on it, which is pretty awesome and frees up a lot of real estate. And this is my little workstation. This is the stainless steel bench, Vitamix, food processor, got some other fun goodies down here. My neighbor just gave me a deep fryer recently, which is wild. Uh, I have a KitchenAid that we got as a wedding gift that I really should probably start using more. I'm not really a big baker, but oop. Oh. And the pan is smoking hot. All right, let's do this. Yep, 
It's pretty much the exact same method, one very small variation. All right. Oil. Egg. Now all I'm gonna do with this spoon is spread out the yolk right now. So spread it out a little bit. So this way the yolk won't like pop in your mouth and run all over the place. It's not quite a scrambled egg, but it's kind of like, you know, a little bit closer to one. Now I'm gonna season this one more or less the same, but I'm gonna put the oregano on a little later. I'm gonna start with the black pepper, hit it with a little red pepper flakes. I'm gonna add a little smoked paprika because I'm going for like a more of like a Mexican style egg. If I had chili powder, I would use it. I don't have chili powder, so instead I'm gonna use this little um, spice rub that I got from Penzi's in Boston. My mom got me this as a little gift. It's pretty good. It, it kind of has like a, a Tex-Mex smell to it. Definitely has chili powder in it, so that's the closest I'm gonna get. I'm gonna add a little bit of that. And see, I sprinkled a little too low, and now there's like this big clump of seasoning right there, which is going to be a little intense. And picking up the pan, letting the pan not get too hot again. I feel like you can see that. Another way, if you don't have a spoon, you can kind of just like do that, and the oil will get on top, and you're cooking the egg from both sides by doing that. You watch a sec. I'm just going to take a quick peep in the fridge to see if I have anything cool to put on top of this. Not much, but I'm going to grate some cheese. This is this like catamilk cheddar cheese from Whole Foods. Apparently it says it's lactate, lactose free. I don't really know what that means, but... I'm not really good with dairy, so I'm into it. I'm just gonna melt a little bit of cheese on top. Uh, this is a cool thing I have for cheese melting. I'm not gonna use it too much right now because the egg's gonna overcook, but it's this little Cuisinart thing. You just like pop that on top. In theory, if there wasn't so much oil in here, you squirt a little bit of water in there, and then the steam will get trapped in here and like melt the cheese very quickly without overcooking the egg. Um, but I'm not going to do that right now. I didn't have too much oil. And if you add cold water to a lot of really, really hot oil, you're going to have... Whoosh. So don't do that. Let's get that in a second. Look. That was beautiful. Melted some cheese on it. So this is more of like the crispy egg taco shell. Once again. Bam, see? No stick. Perfect sear. Cool thing about this technique is this is just searing 101. So if you ever cooked a piece of fish and uh, and have it like stick to the pan all gross and you ruin that nice crispy skin that you were trying to get, and it's because you flipped it too soon. You just have to wait for the, the food to fully cook away from the surface and it's gonna release. And this is another reason why you want stainless steel. Non-stick is, you know, I don't like non-stick. Not a fan of it. All right, and this one's gonna cook a little faster too because if you break up the egg yolk, you're not waiting for that to all cook. And there you go, now you have a cheesy crispy egg taco. Now what I would do if I had avocados, obviously this is scarce time, is I would throw a nice little chunk of avocado right in the middle of there. Um, what I do have is this homemade avocado jalapeno crema, which is a recipe that I am still working on, but I will send it your way very soon. Super easy. All you do is I roast, I char the, you know, char a bunch of jalapenos on the grill, um, put them in a, in my Vitamix with half of, or a quarter of an onion, a couple cloves of garlic, uh, water and white vinegar, and blend it. And that's literally uh, some you know salt and some pepper, and that's it. There's no cream in this. It's just all avocado and jalapenos. But look how creamy it is. And it's so good. 
if you like it spicy, you leave all the seeds in the jalapenos. But if you're uh, not a big fan of the spice, just take out, you know, scrape out the seeds. It's really not that hard. All right, I'm going to let that one just cool for two seconds before digging in because last time that didn't go so well for Chelsea. <laughs> Let me move my computer. Cool. So I'm not looking at the comments right now, but let me know if any of you guys are actually going to try to make this egg and how it goes. And please tag me at uh, Slothrest and also at Drums of the Sloth. And if you follow me at Drums of the Sloth, I've been doing tons of cooking during this whole quarantine period, and I'm going to be doing a lot more. I might actually... Um, try to make scotch eggs today, which I've never done before. I'm a little like scared of trying it. It might be one of those failure moments, but I'm gonna give it a shot either today or tomorrow. So if you're interested in a scotch egg, uh, check out my Instagram later this afternoon, probably in a couple hours, I got a bunch of shit to do. But let's pick this up. Now just imagine whatever you want inside of that. That You could put some chorizo, you could put Grilled onions and mushrooms, avocado, anything you want. Look at that beautiful crispy skin. And uh, ready? And listen to this crunch. This is like some ASMR shit. Looks really good. Man. I eat these all day. This really like changed my whole view on eggs. I was never a big egg in the morning person, but this this will do it. Ready for another? Mmm. Little cheese pull. Where is my non-paper product dish rag? These are cool. You throw them in the wash, or if you use them too much and they get too gross, you throw them out because they cost like 50 cents a pop or something. And that's that's about it. Um, let me know what kind of food tutorials you guys would like to see next. And yeah, more coming at you guys soon. I hope everyone stays safe. I hope everyone's eating well um, and taking this time to learn how to cook because if you you know you learn how to cook, you're, you'll never go hungry. So uh, yeah, awesome, all right. Will Gorin out. Peace, y'all.